Okay, so you want to recap of last episode? Crow is now a regular girl, and she promised to step on us. Okay, we start the video. The next day. Yeah, we had a nice night. We had a, we actually had a good, meaningful conversation with Crow, so I'm not even going to imply that there was anything more than that happening. It was just a really good, deep conversation. <sighs> Michu, I don't want to see you. This isn't about you anymore. This is so much bigger. Opening my eyes, I found Mitri beside me this time. Like many other times. Ohio. As Mitri greeted me, I glanced on my phone. 6.30, my usual wake-up time. Too early for me. I thought I'd just sleep in since I was up late last night, but Mitri served as a potent alarm clock. Yeah, we don't get to sleep in in this house. Ah, now what about... That was a nice night. I asked what she meant once the motor in my brain was running properly. Yeah, how did you know about that, though? Are you just constantly monitoring my room? Is that a serious question? I mean, that's true, but nothing happened. I mean, that sounds like a very cliche thing to say. Oh, good. As always, my little sister was the best. Mm, debatable. And the best thing about her, well, I found my gaze shifting to where her blouse was unbuttoned. Whoa, my guy. <laughs> it took me a second to realize what he was talking about. I'm like, hmm, kind of sus, Ray. Kind of sus. She grew up to be nice and healthy, all right. If it bothered you, then you could have said something to grow. Something you wanted to know. What was that? I'm hopelessly in love with her. She's like the best thing to ever grace my presence. Now I get it. She wasn't worried about Crow, she just mentioned her name to gauge my reaction. In that case, it's just as you heard. I was thinking more of a wife, but sure. I scratched my cheek. Oh, and I suppose you're going to show me. Is that what you're implying? Oh no, the drugs are kicking in. Oh no, it's fading to black. They didn't even mention what just happened there. After receiving Mitra's strange criticism, I got dressed, ate breakfast, and steeled myself in case I had to feel her wrath once again. Now that I think of it, it's been a long time since we walked to school together, Mitra. <laughs> Yeah, our, our memories are a little bit um, mashed up. You know, there's there's a lot that happened, which I really like. Yeah, I've been leaving it to Didi a lot before now. Speaking of, what's going on with her anyways? Yeah, she probably wants to know what the hell is going on. I mean, I wouldn't blame her. Fair message for me. Well... <laughs> you know, of course you did, Mitru. Of course you did. How could I have expected anything less from you? Poor Didi. Well, it wasn't a big deal. I'd get to see her again in a few days anyways. God bless. It's been a few days since I played this game, and I like, forgot how great it is to see this. Morning. There was no more evidence of last night's sad feelings in her cheerful smile. Well, great! This was turning out great. I presumed our maids must have made her one heck of a breakfast. Yeah, now we'll have Dee Dee, who's a glutton, and we'll have Crow, who's a glutton, mainly because she's never tasted food, really. So, I wouldn't blame her. I don't know. I'll make her the breakfast I eat. I I like to make hash browns and uh, eggs. That's what I eat. Yep. Probably should add like some bacon in there, but bacon's not really great for you, so I'm like, eh. But you know, you only live once, so I'm like, eh, you know, should I have some bacon? Maybe I should. Crow looked a little bashful as she returned the greeting. I guess I really should have asked her to say yeah last night after all. I know you missed out, my guy. I was so disappointed. But more importantly. We're both stepping out for a little bit, so be a good girl while you're we're gone. 
Wow, she really he really does talk to her like a daughter or something, you know? Like a little kid. Are you really gonna be alright? I'm so happy we can remember this. Like, it was, I was really enjoying some of the comments y'all left me about how, like, this route, like, y'all agreed with me that this route, like, makes the whole game so much better. Like, ju just the first hour of this route made this game 100% better. Uh, I'm not, I'm not saying, I'm not saying it was bad before. Like, I really have enjoyed this. There's been a lot of great moments, right? But this route is uh, just so good. It's like that little piece of something you didn't have before that just made it the whole meal better. <laughs> yeah, I guess not. Well, how about after school we'll go out and buy a phone for you? Crow's eyes sparkled with excitement. You know, we probably could, but probably shouldn't. Quit asking possibilities of me. She really was a child. While Crow raised her voice in encouragement at us, it was obvious her mind was focused on something other than trying to get us to school on time. Probably thinking about lunch. Just had breakfast, she's already trying to... Cat, what are you doing? Yeah, I'm talking to you. My cat is vigorously chasing her tail right now, and it is adorable. That reminds me about the getup Crow was wearing. What's up with that? She naturally wasn't within earshot of us now, so I opted to ask Mitra about it. Well, I demand that all the girls wear it. I want to see a picture of all of them in it. I, I, I won't take anything less. That's right. Yeah, I mean, right. <laughs> Come on, you, you know she wouldn't know anything about it. She can't see it. Well, that get up did leave quite an impression on me. It was basically a parka with cat ears. Must be one of my hand me downs. It's yours. What? Why the hell have we not seen you in it then? What? Yeah, exactly right. Thank you, asking the hard-hitting questions here. This is good journalism. If I had seen Mitra wearing that outfit, it would have been so cute, I would have surely remembered it. You know, fair enough, but your brother wants you to wear it, okay? I, I'm speaking on behalf of Ray. I can read his inner thoughts. He wants you to wear it, okay? And, and Makoto. And Mio. Didi. You know, he wants, he wants everyone to wear it. Ah, I see what you mean. I guess considering how Mitra's sense of hearing was of utmost importance in her day-to-day -day life, any clothing which covered up the ears wouldn't do anything at all. Or wouldn't do at all. You know, guys, have I ever told you, like, Mitra's probably my favorite character in this game. Like, I, I know I say a lot about Crow, but... But Michiru, there's just nobody like her in this in this game. You know, she's she's just a great sister, really loyal, really caring. You know, really knows how to cater to her brother. Yeah, I think Michiru's Michiru's a great character, for sure. I'll think about it. That wasn't even a joke. I was dead serious. I know you were. I like I said, I speak for Ray right now. I I know his inner thoughts. He didn't need to say it. I knew. What a smorgasbord for my eyes that'd be. I'll just have to take my time and seriously consider it. Well, anyways, I had the same kind of feeling when Little Mitra was with us, too, but I don't really like to leave someone on their own at home while we're at school. I don't know. Will she get herself into trouble? No, more just like I feel a bit of pity about doing that or something. Yeah, 
I said this a million times before, but try concealing your real attention sometimes, especially given the circumstances. Uh, I don't know how that would work. I mean, don't you kind of need documentation? You can't just like show up to school like, hey, I'm a student. I'm definitely like 16, you know? <laughs> Let me into school. Because <laughs> it's like, if you don't have the proper like vetting, then you could just let adults come to school. And, um, uh, there's some problems with that. Ignoring what I just said, eh, but that's not a bad idea, actually. I mean, though, to be fair, I think Ray's family could probably have the resources to create a fake document. Maybe a little unethical, but they could do it, for sure. Unlike little Mitru, Pro was certainly able to pass off as someone roughly around her age. But she didn't have any official documentation. She certainly wouldn't be in the family register. Perhaps we could evoke the name of Sawatari to expedite things, but for some reason I felt hesitant about wanting to drag my family into that. Yeah, I feel like Ray does tend to try to do things on his own without his family name. I, he doesn't really bring it up too much. I feel like the biggest example of him using the name might have been in in uh, Misaki's route. <laughs> Actually, I am plotting a scheme, because I, I realized earlier, when I was mentioning girls I'd want to see in, in certain outfits, Misaki I did not mention, and Misaki I absolutely would want to see in all those outfits too. So I just want to throw that out there real quick. I, I did not forget about Misaki, I promise. Misaki's important. Hey, I'm thinking here. Stop trying to read my mind. <laughs> Mitru showed me her usual innocent smile as she giggled at me. My sister was evidently happy that the two of us were walking to school together again. At any rate, I was happy about it too. Yeah, that was a nice conversation with Mitru. It was very, um, enlightening. For sure. Yeah, wholesome. One might say. After that, in spite of my own anxieties about riding the monorail, I arrived at school without incident. Good. I think we're okay to ride the monorail. It seems like once we fall in love with somebody and then ride the monorail, it's, it's gonna be a different story. And we already know who we are gonna be falling in love with, you know. Stepping into the classroom, I saw Shuji. Ah, this guy. Speaking of, I guess he would've been part of the whole charade. I wonder if he remembers anything about it. That would be funny. I hope he does. Uh, yo, Ohio. Ohio. Shuji responded with a sour look. Maybe he woke up on the wrong side of the bed or something. Yeesh, he's acting so much like usual, I can't tell if he remembers anything. I have a feeling he would just act like his normal self, whether he remembered something or not. Maybe he would, like, just bring it up, but... Do you know a girl named Miu? Oh, he really doesn't remember Miu. Okay. Wow. Oh, okay. Guess I'm just imagining things. Looks like he didn't have any of those future memories. Which meant that the whole emotional spat we had at the beach over Mia's situation was effectively never going to happen now. I mean, I'd be okay with that. It was a mixed blessing. An extremely mixed blessing indeed. I know, I know something you don't, Shuji. You lack critical information. <laughs> Just F you, man. <laughs> Same to you, though maybe there was a time when you acted surprisingly delicate. As we were chatting about nothing, Makoto came in the classroom. Ooh, Ohio. How's it going? As we said hello, Shuji gave me a look like he'd just seen something unusual happen. Yeah, he's probably wondering why we keep saying hello. We, we've said good morning so much in this episode already. Oh yeah, all the time. You haven't noticed, my guy? Good for you. I'm glad you, you're keeping to yourself and minding your own business. That's great. Yeah, we realize we live pretty close together. We've talked a few times. I mean, what wrong ideas could they get? <laughs> She's like, wait a minute. We were just in a relationship, like, what, two episodes ago? Makoto evidently didn't realize the situation right away. Well, since Makoto wasn't displaying the kind of unbridled affection towards me that she did that time before, I figured things would be alright. Probably. Uh, 
Oh, ah, yo roshiku. Interesting. Makoto's sudden desire to talk to us made Shuji stare at her blankly. Ignoring Shuji, I pulled Makoto aside for a quick word. You're still able to act casual towards me in the classroom, are you? You know, I'm just really glad Makoto's back the way she was. I don't know if I could handle her being like she was in uh, her route all the time. It was a handful. So I guess this means that only the people who remember anything are the girls I dated in other timelines, which I'm okay with. <laughs> yeah, Makoto? Were you hoping for something? Interesting. Yeah, I, I have seen some games that do have a best friend route. And, uh, it's quite interesting. I, I kind of find it interesting that they would have that. Um, uh, you know, they can do whatever they want. You think you can just say whatever you want to my face like that without me getting mad? Have I got news for you? I mean, true. Like, I mean, are you really best friends if you don't get a little gay with each other sometimes, you know? So anyways, I have a really good best friend. Just kidding. <laughs> oh, I don't want to hear it. Makoto looked around the classroom. But what do you mean by that crowd? Talking about the crowd that like speculates and, and creates ships? I, I don't know. I don't I don't really have a problem with shipping. I think some people have a problem when it comes to like real people and shipping them together. I think that's a different story, but as far as like characters, you know, in novels, who cares? Ship them. You know? I was just watching that uh AMV, I don't know if you guys have ever seen it. I don't care, I ship it. Or Ship Happens, that's what it's called. Ship Happens. That, that one's a really good AMV. It's funny. It's a little parody. Anyways, I'm getting horribly off track here. Alright. I know. Isn't it nice? It is, it is great. Nobody is just blurting out our secrets. It's, it's wonderful. Better enjoy that feeling while it lasts, then. Things would definitely get rowdy in here again soon, though I was a little excited for that. I don't know. You still uh, have feelings for uh, Dee Dee? Hmm? Hmm? A little bit? I mean, I'm gonna blame him. Uh, Dee Dee's route, like I said, was one of my favorites. I, I genuinely mean that. And a Dee Dee was the character I probably liked the least. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. Dee Dee's route was one of the best, for sure. By the way, there's a word I need to mention to you, Makoto. Yeah, I mean, that's how you have a conversation with people. You use a lot of words. It would be kind of boring if you use the same ones. What do you mean by that? Fixers. Winston Wolf types to solve problems. The Janucci family knows a lot about people like that, right? Huh? I want to get Crow some proper documentation. Your family seems to have more friends in high places than mine, after all. <laughs> Why is she so surprised about it? She's, she's acting a little bit weird. Kuro's eyes popped open surprised after she realized what I meant. <laughs> she's like, hmm, if she was a criminal, you know, be a little bit harder, but... Shouldn't be too difficult. Costs me. My family's rich. Bill it to them. I don't care. Money's gonna help things out. I'll pay whatever price you need. That makes two of us said. Yeah, I was gonna say Makoto plays dirtier than us, okay? Let's not even pretend here that Ray's the dirty one. Ray is actually one of the most respectful visual novel protagonist I've seen. Compared to some other ones, he's doing all right, okay? So, Makoto, I don't want to hear it from you. Yeah, exactly. He's a nice guy, and he's not doing it to just get in her pants. I enjoyed that. Makoto showed me a great big smile, then turned to go back to her seat. I had a feeling I was forgetting something, though, so I called to her again. Makoto. 
Try not to drop your lunchbox again. <laughs> I love that they both remember that. Yeesh. I gave a short sigh. I was thankful that there were people in this world who could talk of... Who could talk about breaking the law so frankly. Have I ever told you guys this track is a bop? I love, I love some of the music in this game. It's pretty good. Then my phone lit up with a new text message received. It was from someone I didn't have listened to my contacts, but one look at the message was enough to figure out who the sender was right away. It's not Crow, is it? Better. It's Misaki. Only Misaki would have to explain that. Only Misaki. I love it. She must have gotten my phone number again from Michiru. Set up my reply as, as you wish, your highness. Okay. I thought this was going to be, um... Uh... Frick. The, the Princess Bride. There we go. That's the movie I'm thinking of. I thought it was going to be a Princess Bride reference. Then again, Misaki's contact info is in my phone. Well, I guess I'll just have to live out my boring-ass normal life in peace until Dee Dee shows up. I love that he's so excited for Dee Dee. Like, he's like, huh, it's too too bland around here. You know, I need Dee Dee to spice it up. Make it interesting. Even, that means Ray really thinks highly of her. Then he must have liked her route as much as I did. It's canon. Even while I thought about that, the only thing I could really live out in peace for that moment was my boring ass classes. Wow, you're saying boring ass a lot today, huh? Then came lunch break. I went downstairs to buy milk and black tea from the vending machine, then I headed up to the roof. Did he bring her favorite drink? Nice, right? Indeed I did. I gave the two girls their drinks. Gosh. Ray's Riz is immaculate. His his pickup game? He just is so good. Study something from him, guys. Learn from this man. That's interesting, she remembers. Again, gonna dream of forgetting to treat a couple of cute girls like this. Dang, Ray. You got Crow here, but he's like, nah. And he has Makoto. And he probably has Didi. And he's got a sister, but he's like, nah. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go out of my way to pick up these cute girls, too. This is, this is just the best route, guys. This is the best route bar none. There is no better route in this game than this. There is none. So good. I guess I shouldn't be flirting with them. No, you should. This this will turn into the harem route. We get all the girls. That definitely was easier said than done. It just comes naturally to him. He just, he just flirts. He's like, oh, it's easier said than done. You know, it's hard for me not to flirt. One of the best uh, visual novel protagonists of our time. Then I noticed Mew gazing at me with a serious face, her head cocked to one side. What's wrong, Mew? You don't want milk. That's a boob reference. 100%. I, I know what she's saying. I doubted it was a serious business that she let on, though. She's gonna be like, well, you know, you gotta drink a lot of milk to get bigger boobs. I'm like, is there any science to that? Is that just like an old wives' tale, you know? Technically, yes. I don't think he realizes. Maybe uh, maybe now he does, but in the past, I don't think he realized he could do that. I was so surprised I ended up answering her question with another question. Yes. ちょっと初めて会った頃だね。True? うん。あの時レイ先輩は私たちのことを調べたって言ってたけど、もしかして二度目のことだったのかなって。Hmm, interesting thought. Interesting. Oh shit. <laughs> Mio was sharp as a t
I know that that's kind of an interesting thing about Mio is like she's the youngest, but she notices things. She's like very aware of other people. Um, I don't feel like that's something I really appreciated when I first started the game. I have this problem where when I first start a novel, I miss a lot of things about the characters and their personalities. Like, because once you get to a certain point in the novel, you're like, okay, I know the characters pretty well and things like that. I always feel like I don't really appreciate them enough at the start of the game just because I don't know them yet. And I mean, that, that that's like a no-brainer, right? Like, I'm sure some of you are like, just you're so stupid. Of course, that, that that's just common sense. But I don't know. I always have this regret that I didn't, like, notice things about characters or I didn't appreciate those things early on. Uh, and I have to, like, mention that later. I don't know why I'm mentioning them. That's just something I've always felt in, like, every visual novel I play. Like, I feel like the start of the game, like, I... I don't know. I just miss out on little details like that. No, it wasn't really a problem. I just didn't want them to know I could turn back time by five minutes even now. Because if Mio found out about that power I had, the memories I had with her would just seem fake. Yeah, I, I could see that. They might think, like... Oh, when did you turn back time? Did you turn back time to do this? Or it's the only reason you were nice is because of that, right? I gripped the watch in my pocket very tightly without even thinking. Ever since the time of the monorail in the evening where I ended up being sent far back in time, I tried to test the watch's power. I hadn't tried to test the watch's power even once. I could probably assume that I had lost my power to go back in time five minutes. However, the worst thing of all was even trying to use the pocket watch could potentially summon the goddess known as Kronos. I'd rather know for sure instead of letting it bother me, so maybe I should just give it a try. Although there's probably at least a 90% chance that it won't work. I didn't answer the question of choosing instead to throw the pocket watch to the ground. Hmm. Yeah, I'm kind of curious what's going to happen if he does this. With a familiar sensation, time went backwards. Back in the first floor hallway, I must have been on my way to get their drinks. Whoa, whoa, the first thing I felt was surprise. I didn't expect that the power in the watch would still work. I nervously looked around to see if the goddess Kronos would appear, but even after waiting for a moment, nothing happened. That confirmed another thing for me. Kronos would not hesitate to take my life, but at the same time, she wasn't determined to do so. Even though she tried to kill me before, making use of my power didn't cause her to come after me again. I was truly insignificant to her. I felt a complex mix of fear, annoyance, and relief as I bought the same drinks as before and then headed up the stairs to the roof once again. Then, then what? This is about me knowing what your favorite drinks are. I actually asked Michiru about it before. Same conversation repeated itself, but this time I wasn't surprised. Plus, I had a better answer prepared for that question. Nice save, my guy. Probably. Yeah, I mean, who doesn't have a bunch of anxiety? If you don't, like, I envy you. Really should drive Mio out to a rustic old town in the countryside where she can't get hurt, or maybe she should lock. We could lock her up in a mansion on a desert island to protect her from her own bad luck. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't blame you. But, um, I think the solution is let's just not take Mew to high places. Let's not take her to a roof. Because we all know what happens then. I wouldn't want to go either. Yeah, we, we have to be very careful. <laughs> Yeah, school is extremely dangerous for her. Yeah, true, maybe the Grim Reaper spared her thus far because she's still just a first year. Uh, I feel like we spared her by saving her, like, what was it, twice? So she should join a movie club over the summer. Maybe she'll set off a flag that way. You know, that's actually a good example. <laughs> that is you. You are always getting yourself into trouble. He was on the verge of tearing up with Misaki, and I now stated, we turned to the main issue at hand. So why did you call me up to the rooftop? Yeah, if it wasn't to confess me, confess to me, what was the point of it? For some reason, Misaki's face turned bright red, and she started stuttering. 
What's with that reaction? So cute. I'm getting all the weird ideas. I don't know. Two girls alone on the roof with me? Asking a strange thing? Mm -hmm. I don't know what that could be. I mean, I don't think Ray's opposed. You know? Anyways, I won't know if it's a strange thing until you actually tell me what we're talking about here. Oh, are you into that? What? I was stunned. Me not being nice to Misaki? Stop asking me to do the impossible shit like that. Of course, I did your route first, after all. Now, some people might think, oh, yeah, I did her route first just to get out of the way. I'm like, no, I really genuinely like Misaki. I think she was a cool character. I love spoiling you, Mitru and Mio, as much as humanly possible. When you do something annoying, I'm all like, why, you cheeky kids? I'm still having more fun than you could ever know. Hey, don't look so insulted by it. <sighs> Those two are fun in a different kind of- Whoa, Ray! Oh! Okay, I really want to know what happens in uh, some of those after scenes when you have the patched game now. At least 30% joking. Oh, Mio, ever so perceptive. Of course. What's your own? I know, that's because you're talking to me. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> just threw her under the bus right there. Whatever, let's just get back to what we were discussing earlier. Mio's like, you know, this feeling is, is very familiar. Mio gave a short sigh. I just enjoy talking to Miyazaki too much so I can get carried away. Anyways, Mio explained to me what she meant. Yeah, but it's only if I date one person, if I date all of you. You know, maybe I won't die. その打開速が見つかるまで誰もレイ先輩にアプローチしない。that's the worst thing you could do. I don't like this idea. Honestly, though, that would suck from their perspective. Like, they all have memories of dating this one guy. <laughs> and none of them are allowed to make a move on him. Like, the, their, their feelings are just unrequited, you know? I feel like that would kind of I don't I don't even know what what words to use with that. That would just kind of suck. Let's just say it that way. I I'm sorry. I have no other way to say it. I was a little surprised, but I understood. That was all I could say. So that's how it was. No matter how I looked at it, no matter how many times I brought I thought back over it, there was really nothing else I could say in response to that. They were right. That was what we had to do. I knew that. I know we have to do this. I immediately nodded. I mean, does he have feelings of being with Mio? I, I I don't I don't know. He technically wasn't ever in a relationship with her, unless they're like calling from whatever is gonna be after Crow's route. You guys have said it's not really like a route or anything, so I'm not really sure what to think of it. I don't know. Does he really have that much of a connection with Mio? I know he kind of had feelings for her in the common route or whatever. But I don't even know if I would say that they were dating or anything. I mean, he's seen her panties, but he's seen a lot of the girls' panties. So, I mean, that doesn't really mean anything, right? I, I really hate that I can talk about that so casually. Like, I just mentioned, like, yeah, he's seen her panties. Like, whatever, right? <laughs> 
I feel like a degenerate when I talk like that. I just... It's just so casual. <sighs> Getting back to it. Rather, Misaki still liked me too much. Well, I mean, yeah, she was very much in love with you. I mean, that was very clear from early on in her route, really. It wasn't even, like, something that had to build up for a long time. Everyone was doing this for my sake, so I wasn't going to complain. But it was a strange feeling. I decided to get a girlfriend and lose my virginity, and after many twists and turns, there ended up being multiple girls I had fallen in love with. However, my memories only spanned up to the point where I started dating each of them, so I don't really remember any of the dirty things that would come after that. Good. Furthermore, if I got a girlfriend now, I would die. <laughs> I like how he just says that so casually. In other words, the rest of my youth would be boring and uneventful like a can of soda every rift of the carbonation. I think he'll be okay if he eats lunch with you, Misaki. I don't think that's going to kill him. Yeah, the solution is we just date Crow. Yeah, we just don't date any of these girls. We just date Crow. Misaki showed me a forlorn smile as she headed back into the building. After watching Misaki leave, for some reason, Mia turned to me and smiled. Is that what they're gonna do? They're gonna like have this little route there at the end. It's kind of like a maybe an epilogue, and it's like, yeah, no matter what timeline we're in, our love with Mia will never blossom. I'm gonna be pissed if that's the ending. I'm just letting you guys know right now. I'm gonna be pissed. The secret between us, right? Ooh, secrets. Okay. Mia told me that rather surprising thought before following Misaki back inside the school. Yeah, because I feel like Mia, a love route between us and Mia could still happen. I mean, it just hasn't happened up until this point. But I don't know, it just depends on how they view time, I guess. Are all these, these timelines kind of like going at the same time? I don't know. I had to hold back a grin. There were a lot of different things for me to think about, but first I need to get lunch out of the way. Freaking, I'm trying to get dinner out of the way. I'm hungry. What is it, like 4 o'clock right now? I'd originally been planning on eating lunch with Misaki and Mio, but in the end here, I was left alone under the blue sky to eat on the rooftop, all by my lonesome. I could have cried. Then, casually peering over the edge, I saw some sort of strange commotion around the school gate. Wait, don't tell me that's... Change of plans. I took my lunch, went back inside the building, and walked down the stairs. Who's by the gates? Is it Crow? Exiting the building, I found the courtyard had much more commotion on going than the rooftop, which confirmed my suspicions. Continued heading towards the gate. If Crow came to school wearing that cat outfit, I'm going to be very disappointed. <laughs> she... <sighs> Crow, you, you can't be doing this. You, you can't. It's too good. The school cannot handle this. The school will, will explode. Crow was loitering around the school gate, jumped in surprise when I called out to her. She'd always floated before, but now that she was human jumping was the best she could do. I don't know. You can't be coming to school in this cat outfit, okay? And let's let's just observe, okay? You have this this interesting spot here in the middle where you're just kind of uh, showing a lot of skin, and then you have a collar, which to me either implies you're like I don't know, quirky. But let's just use that. Let, let's imply quirky, okay? Uh, or you're kinky. Those are the two words I would use. I don't know, my mother's calling. Ignore that. <laughs> so you came here because you're getting bored of lazing around at home, then. She seemed unable to be honest about her true motive, so I translated that vagueness into directness. It's either because you're cute or because you're suspicious to them. Crow wasn't as good at getting along with unfamiliar people as Didi was, so that's why you're at school then. I mean, how the hell did you even know where our school is anyways? She was effectively saying the only place she's just comfortable being in the places where I was. I couldn't help but be surprised. Hey, nothing wrong with that, right? Perhaps she didn't even realize that herself. It wasn't a bad feeling to have her be so reliant on me, but also rather a strange one. So, yeah, but... 
Something like that. Noticing the lunchbox in my hands and all the people walking around the school grounds, Crow caught on to it. Have you eaten? Of course you have. Well, I still need to eat lunch, but once I'm finished, we can go for a little stroll. I'll skip. Uh oh, rumors are going to be going around that Ray is skipping school to go with this cat girl. You just be... never mind. But really, this much should be okay. I almost said I don't want to leave her because she'd just be lonely, but I changed my mind and stopped myself mid-sentence. It was true that I'd never skipped class like this before, but right now I needed to. I remember all my classes in the first semester being boring. That's <laughs> all. Okay, that's that's an interesting way of saying it, but I'm, I'm sure a lot of people could relate to it. I mean, I already knew what questions were going to be on the test anyways. That is true. We kind of already know what questions will be on the test, because we've kind of done them already. Pro smiled happily. Wow, you're simple. Just forget it. Anyways, I'm gonna go eat. I'll be back in like half an hour, so just wait for me. Why do you say that? Have you bit your tongue a few times? Is that why you're telling us to be careful? You're like, oh, how do you guys chew like this all the time? I ignored Crow talking to me like a mother went to her child and went back inside the building. Well, if she said so herself, I guess I ought to take my time and enjoy my lunch. But still, it takes some real determination to make a sacrifice of my own like that, if it'll make a girl smile. Ray would do anything to make these girls smile. I've kind of learned that throughout the routes. He's a good guy like that. I went back to my classroom, ate my lunch, then took my backpack in hand and stole away. Tabori? No. <laughs> I was surprised to hear someone suddenly addressing me like that. Uh, I don't feel so hot, so I'm going home. Yeah, it's like, oh, it's, it's hot in here. Like, oh. Yeah. She was too sharp. Yeah, thank, thanks, Makoto. <laughs> uh, so you figured that out. It's easy for her to presume that the real reason for my early departure had to do with Crow. I was the one who asked her to look after Crow, after all. Well, it's not a big deal or anything. I said it's fine, just stay and hit the books. She nodded with relief since she could tell from my attitude there wasn't anything wrong. Don't do that. There are many ways you can help me, Makoto, but not right now. In a silent response to my curiosity, Makoto held out her hand. I instinctively stretched out my hand, expecting like a handstick or something. Instead, she reached past, reached past and jabbed me in the stomach and said, ah. Even though she only touched me for an instant, I felt like I'd been socked with a pair of brass knuckles. I could feel the cold sweat running down my back. She attacked my weak point for massive damage. It was a critical hit. <laughs> Yeah, but, but I don't want to die. I don't- I, I need to do stuff still today. I don't want to actually be sick. Even while I was doubled over clutching my stomach and pain, I couldn't argue with that. In this state, anyone would believe that I was sick. I still had no idea where she would learn how to do this, but my stomach had more of a dull, throbbing ache to it than a sharp pain. Alright, see you tomorrow. Thanks for nearly killing me. <laughs> After receiving Makoto's wonderful little present, I stumbled off to my next destination. Thanks to Makoto's special consideration, every student I saw on the way out of the building shot concerned glances my way. Um, I'm pregnant. Yep. Don't, don't question it. Took my hand off Madam, and once the pain subsided, finally managing to stand up straight. Yeah, something like that. Since it's such a nice day, we should walk through the park into the shopping district. Uh, the monorail, I guess not. I didn't really want to, but I suppose it wasn't all that necessary either. In any case, we need to buy you a cell phone. <laughs> of course, I understood why she was happy, but then her expression suddenly turned somewhat anxious. Uh, what, are you going to tell me? I don't know how to use a cell phone. You are talking to one of the richest people in this game. What do you mean? You don't need to worry about it. Okay? 
Don't worry about it. I'll pay for it. That's surprising. I didn't expect you to worry about the money. Yeah, but this is a novel where we conveniently have everything we need. So, don't worry about it. I suppose you don't know that much, but I didn't know you cared so much about stuff like that. Oh yeah, it is. You know, don't look at it like that, okay? Just because someone has more money than you doesn't make them better than you. I say that as somebody who doesn't have a lot of money. Yeah, that really sucks though if you can't afford a, a drink from the vending machine. That means you must be really bad. Really in bad shape. Guess that's another fun discovery you made. Pat a crow on the head. Well, don't worry about it too much. Even if my student self can, even my student self can provide for you. Okay. To be fair, you have a watch that can make it so you can go back in time and easily win things. So you can provide yourself with money that way. And then your family is just stupid rich too. I'm sure. I get an allowance from my parents, and I also made use of the watch's power to keep buying lottery tickets over and over until I. Oh wait. I was forgetting something. I had returned the moment when I first obtained the power of the pocket watch, which meant my bank account balance was the same as it had ever been. This time around, quite a few things had been undone, after all. I didn't have the guts to incessantly buy lottery tickets right in front of Crow, so I just have to make do with my meager savings for now. I have a feeling his meager savings are, like, the income of some people. Okay, because he's talking about getting an income from his family, you know, for allowance. I'm sure his his allowance is more than some people make in a month. I'd be willing to bet. Today feels awfully cold for summer. No, it's nothing. Anyways, let's get going. I started walking in order to hide the expression I made up, realizing the pathetic amount of money I had at my disposable. And she hastily chased after me. We're just gonna pretend I never make mistakes when I'm talking, guys. We'll just pretend that I'm perfect at reading the English language, and I don't sometimes say words I don't mean. From the perspective of the sundial, we'd set out from the school at 6 o'clock, heading in the direction of the station and shopping district at 12 o'clock. Naturally, this meant we were walking due north. I bought some tea for Crow on the way, since she said she was thirsty. <laughs> Yeah, you should probably learn to walk first a little bit better. Seems like you're still in trouble with that. First topic of conversation didn't change it at all as we walked. It was only natural she would worry about it considering her savings and income were both nil. Crow is actually surprisingly considerate of um, just society in general. She's like, oh, I need to like work, work and earn my keep. Like, wow, you are a good citizen and you aren't even a citizen of Japan. Hey, Crow, I don't mean to say having a job is a bad thing here, but don't you want to try being a student first? Mm -hmm. Schools exist so people can learn things like skills for work, how to get along with other people, and how to work in groups. Yeah, I think that's a good representation of what the school system should be doing for you. I feel like a lot of people in school would disagree with some of those things and probably say, Oh, I'm learning things that really don't matter. Not really learning how to work in groups because I hate everyone around me, and uh, this is not teaching me how to get a job. I feel like a lot of people would agree with that sentiment, but I don't know. I might just be talking out of my butt here. So usually people are students before they enter the workforce. I'm a student right now, but I prefer not to have to worry about money while you're in school, so I can give you an allowance to cover your expenses. But what? Crow started fidgeting. What, is there still something else you're worried about? Nothing more important than money. Are you worried about food? I kind of did earlier because you guys are both kind of gluttonous a little bit. I mean, I don't know if you'll be in our same class, but. Oh, 
I was at a loss for words. Talk about a pickup line. I knew that Crow didn't have any other choices besides me, but I still made my heart beat faster. Uh, I was thinking about putting you in the first year class with Mitra, Misaki, and me, but would you rather be in the second year class with me? Crow nodded. Those were her genuine feelings. Oh, well, she did make any major blunders in the new settings at school. I suppose it would be better for me to take responsibility for her. All right, then we'll walk to school together once I get the paperwork taken care of. Crow showed me a smile of uncertainty and excitement. To tell the truth, I felt that same mix of uncertainty and excitement. There's something new. This was something new for Crow. A possibility with an outcome she couldn't foresee. We kept walking until we got to the park. This was Didi had done it another time. Crow heaved a short sigh, even though we hadn't walked very far. Okay, but to be fair, we found out why Didi was doing that. Okay. Depending on the humidity, it can feel a lot worse. Yeah, I've lived in some places that have really strong humidity, and now I live in a place that's very dry, which I kind of prefer. Yeah. There's pros and cons. It's nice not, you know, not walking outside and then feeling like you're sweating. Like as soon as you get out there. But at the same time, my throat gets really, really dry here. And that sucks when I have to talk a lot. I care not to walk too fast inside a girl walking with me, but even then, Crow's gait was quite a bit different from my own. Now that I look at you from this perspective, you're actually pretty short compared to her height to mine once again. Yesterday, I've been so hectic, such an ordinary thing as height had never occurred to me until now. <laughs> You know, I feel like that's a double meaning. Like, she's physically looking down on us, and then maybe looking down on us as, as a higher being. <laughs> I guess you compare it to me or Misaki size-wise. Oh wow, she's, she's really short. I don't know, I'm guessing... I'm guessing she's like either 4'10". I'm gonna say from 4'10 to like 5'2". I say they're very short. Then I found my gaze unconsciously directing itself to Crow's chest. Size wise, eh? Me was shrinking milk desperately to make gains in that area, but Crow might be the smallest of them all. That can be measured with just the naked eye. It was kind of hot how low cut that outfit was, but I guess it probably made them look bigger than they actually are. I like how he's just sitting here. Just an absolute chad, just analyzing boob sizes. He's like, hmm. Yeah, you know, you're about the same height as them, but boob size, eh, you're, you're kind of the lowest of the low, percentile-wise, you know? Definitely no Makoto, that's for sure. <laughs> A man's hopes and dreams. <laughs> you tell him, Crow. She glared at me scornfully behind Crow's face, even that expression was cute. That reminds me, Crow, I was still able to make use of the power in the watch, but will it be alright? Oh, ah, I see. If the goddess Kronos had lost all of her connection with me in this world, then that would have been the end of that. I took out the pocket watch for no particular reason and juggled it back and forth between my hands. Either way, I won't be able to use it as casually as I was before, since I don't know what could happen. Oh, you really think so? I mean, I would say that's a good thing. He, like, really, like, thinks about situations and tends not to just abuse it. I guess I'm just stubborn at those things. A grin crept onto my face. This time around, I probably wouldn't use it for anything aside from things of no importance again. Crow's eyes popped open. Oh good, I'm good. Crow gave a sardonic laugh, then looked up at the blue sky. I followed her gaze there, summer's blue sky. There was just one little thought I had in my mind that I figured was best not to say to Crow right now. I had always envied Crow because I would much rather have preferred to have her power to float through the sky than to turn back time. If only I could try just once to swim freely such a lovely summer sky as this. 
Surely it must have been a wondrous feeling. For all of us who walked upon the earth and find ourselves able to do nothing more than look up at the sky, this is the greatest dream of all. That's a cool photo. I really like that. Oh, good. We finally got to um, get her uh, a phone. I was like, when are we going to do that? We've been just kind of lollygagging the whole time. After we arrived at the shopping district, I signed a second phone contract in my name, then we had it all. Nothing particularly interesting happened. The only thing that we really found really happened was Crow begging to open the box. The phone came in as we walked home. Just let her open the box. Afterwards, I gave Crow a long lecture on how to use her phone until it was time for dinner, and then... Yeah, I figured she's going to start texting us a lot. How boilerplate can you get, yeesh. Blazing around in my room after dinner, I got a message from Crow, who was in the main building. Crow understood this world fairly well by now, and she picked up on how to use her phone and sent texts pretty quickly. I was about to send her some kind of boring response, like, yeah, I got it, but I had the feeling that since it would be the first response she'd get it to a text sent, I should put a little more thought into it. I remember that when someone first replied to one of my text messages, even if it was pretty boring in retrospect, it gave me quite a feeling of accomplishment. I was so naive back then. Then I heard the sound of footsteps running through the hall. Yes, Crow, we got your message. Thank you. Crow had run all the way to my room. I was just about to send you a reply. You didn't have to come all the way here just to check. You're even worse than me, Saki. <laughs> it's true, though. It's true. I'm glad you think so. Most people don't even use their cell phones to talk to people anymore. They just use it for apps or to watch YouTube. She was so excited about having a phone that my retort sailed right over her head. When you were a ghost, you always made fun of us for being on our phones all the time. I mean, we could probably just share him with her. Or happily turned to exit the room. Oh, wait a second. Hey, hey, yo, what, what's up with that, okay? What do you mean, you whelp? Okay, I, I want you to know you end up falling in love with us, okay? For sure. When did I become a whelp anyways? I got out my wallet and took out one of my precious few 10,000 yen bills along with a few more 1,000 yen ones. Just casually pulls out like a $100 bill. I don't want you to be walking around without any money, and I imagine there's going to be a few things you'll need in the future as well, so try to make this last. It's going to be gone tomorrow, isn't it? Crow's eyes glimmer with excitement, just like when she first got her phone. I'm sure we could arrange something. Wow, okay, Ray. Keep a sign hidden under the money. Though hearing a girl say she'd do anything after I gave her a fat wad of cash was... Hey, don't get excited, buddy. Uh, there's a word for, for people who pay women to do anything they want. Um, yeah, they're... Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, don't spend it all at once. Okay, we'll see about that. I'm not so sure about that, but it does take practice to learn how to budget your money. Is she talking about those gotcha machines they have in Japan that give you the little capsules and you can collect things? That'd be a huge waste of money. Will she really be okay? Also, you should talk to Michiru. She can probably get you a wallet and some other little things you'll need. Considering who she is, she receives a lot of gifts from people, but since she's blind, she doesn't get attached to them. So she should have a lot of things like that which uh, don't have any use to her lying around. And if you mention that it's a favor I'm asking of her, she'll no doubt be eager to help you. Alright, sounds good. Once again, Crow turned on her heels and dashed out. But crying out loud, she'd gone from gazing at the moon wistfully like a character in a subpar animated film the previous night to practically bouncing off the walls today. Talk about a mood whiplash. In any case, between her cell phone money and the school she'd be at attending, that took care of most of the basic essentials for Crow to manage in day-to-day -day life. She seemed to be acclimating to things surprisingly quickly, I had been pessimistically thinking that nothing exciting would happen in my life anymore, but now I was starting to get the feeling that there were still fun and exciting things in my future. Still, she doesn't really feel like I'm... This doesn't really feel like I'm starting a new game plus. It's more like save, save data got wiped out and I'm starting from scratch. 
sitting there with a grin and thinking about the future. I suddenly remember Crow's message and how I hadn't sent a response yet. Thinking about it for a brief moment, I typed down my reply. Just cool it. Don't run in the hallways. Yeah, you could think of this as a new game plus. I know he doesn't, but I kind of do. That, that's a good way of putting this route. It is a new game plus. We've gone through the game, we've gone through the story, and now we're getting like this extra bonus level, right? Which I really like. Several days later. Alright, we're gonna end it here. I think this is a good stopping point. We just got through a chapter. Uh, once again, it's continuing to be a good route. I am still very much enjoying it. Hmm. I don't really know where it's gonna go, though. I, I, I'm thinking we're gonna build a relationship with Crow, and we're gonna kind of, like, do it in spite of the, the dangers that come with it. But there's gonna be clearly some big overarching plot. I feel like, uh, I feel like Crow's gonna, like, start to become a normal girl and things like that, and then, like, I think re reality is gonna be ripped from her, and she's gonna realize that she never could be a, a, a normal girl, right? I think, like, something like that's gonna happen, and then we're gonna have to, like, fight for our love and, and fight for us. Um, maybe, maybe Kronos is gonna give us some kind of, like, challenge, like, oh, I'll spare you, you know, if you can really prove that it's true love, and maybe something like that, and then... Yeah, maybe, maybe it'll end with us being happy. We'll have to, like, do some, like, epic build-up to to confessing to her and really, like, having a life together. That's kind of my prediction. I have no idea, though. This is, this could go in any way right now. It's it's a really interesting route having all the girls remember that they, they were in love with us at some point. I think that's the best part of it. But anyways, we shall see what happens in the next episode. Still really enjoying this. I think there's a lot of great moments, and I really like, like I said, all the characters being able to remember everything. I think that makes it so much more fun. And uh, I'm curious to see if anything um, at the end of the route kind of gets, like, solved. Like, maybe we're going to, like, see a future where we had little Mitra come back to us. I wonder if they're ever going to touch on that again, like, things like that. I have no idea how this route's going to go. Anyways, guys, we'll end it here, and I shall see you in the next one. Have a great one.